Alright, we're going to try some joint variation problems. And uh, that is very related to direct variation. So if we say that y varies directly as x, you know, some variable varies directly as some other variable, then the relationship can be described like this. y is equal to x times some constant, uh, which we, so we just call k uh, out of habit. Um, if, if y varies jointly as x and z, and there's two variables, um, then we would say well, y is equal to x times z times some constant. So the only difference here between uh, direct variation and joint variation is that there's another variable here added in the mix. So uh, we'll, look at, um, we'll look at some concrete examples here. So the area of a triangle varies jointly with the lengths of its base and height. So we could say it uh, just off the bat, we would say that A is equal to some constant. So the area of the triangle is equal to some constant uh, times uh, base and height. So in other words, it's in a direct A is in a direct variation. Um, or it, it it varies directly as two different variables here. So some constant times two variables here, base and height. Um, so okay, so if the area of a triangle with a base of three miles, this is a gigantic triangle. Um, if the area of a triangle with a base of three miles and a height of eight miles is twelve square miles, what is the height of a triangle whose base is five centimeters and whose area is twenty-five centimeters squared? Um, so I'm doing this pretty simple example. I mean, by this point, I think you've covered f calculating the area of a triangle, but just to show you that that's an example of joint variation. So uh, area is some constant times uh, base times height. So for this particular triangle, we've got an area of 12 square miles. Uh, so the 12 is equal to some constant times, and then the base was 3 miles, and the height was 8 miles. So now we can use that information to figure out what the constant is and then we can um, modify our, our, our first stab at an equation up here by putting the actual constant in and then we can use that to figure out information on further triangles. So 3 times 8 is 24 so 12 is equal to some constant times 24 um, divide by 24 or we could just look at it and see 12 is what times 24? Well, 12 is 1 half of 24. So k is equal to 1 half, which probably looks pretty familiar, right? Area is 1 half base times height. So now we could figure out, um, now that we know the constant is 1 half, we can figure out um, this. What is the height of a triangle whose base is 5 centimeters and whose area is 25? same area squared. So we know the area, and the area is the constant one-half times um, the base, which we are given as five centimeters, times height. So we could solve for that. Um, so we can multiply both sides by two to get rid of this one-half, so 50 is five times height. So the height is 10 centimeters. All right, that's just a silly kind of simple example just to show you that things you're already familiar with are examples of um, joint variation. I'm just going to move this work up here so we can kind of give ourselves more room. All right, so l let's do one that's a little bit more serious. Um, force varies jointly as mass and acceleration. True story. So force... Force... Um, which you can think of as something that causes something to move or change direction, something that causes uh, a particle or an object to change its velocity. Force varies jointly as mass and acceleration. So we've got some constant and then times these two variables, which we can just call m and a for, for mass and acceleration. So the force um, exerted or, or experienced by an object is um, equal to some constant times its mass times its acceleration. 
So if the gravitational force exerted on me by the Earth is 686 newtons, um, so we're measuring force in newtons, which it doesn't matter if that means anything to you or not, because um, we just fill the information in this equation, and then this constant will kind of take care of, of the units for us. Uh, 686 is equal to some constant times uh, my mass of 70 kilograms and the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth, uh, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So the unit there is meters per second squared. So meters per second per second. Um, so this force of 686 newtons is some constant times my mass times uh, um, the acceleration due to gravity. So that'll be the force of gravity exerted on me. Um, okay, uh, so let's figure out what, what K is. Uh, we can do 70 times 9.8 and that's 686 so 686 is equal to some constant times 686 well lo and behold the constant is equal to 1 right 686 is 1 times 686 why is that well uh, the unit force is measured in um, Kilometer, uh, kilograms per meters per second squared. So um, we used all the units that define newtons, hence this constant is 1. That's a little side note. If that doesn't mean much, that's fine. I'll, it'll maybe ma mean more in the next problem. So the constant is just 1, so we could just say force equals mass acceleration, mass times acceleration, when, when this is in newtons, and when this is in, the mass is in kilograms, and when the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Um, okay, so then the question is, what is the gravitational force exerted on a two kilogram textbook when I drop it out of a window um, to a friend? Um, so the force, that's what we want to know, is equal to the mass, it's two kilograms, times the acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity is still 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so times 9.8. So 2 times 9.8. 2 times 9.8. 19.6. So the force exerted on that textbook is 19.6 newtons. Pretty, pretty uh, straightforward, right? Okay, let's try one that's a little bit more interesting. Um, it involves me making up a unit. Um, I was trying to move this stuff so I have more room. Let's, let's just move this. Um, okay, let's move this too. Let's move everything. Why not? Okay. So I'm going to invent a new unit. Uh, okay, the kinetic energy, uh, the energy of, of motion. Um, the kinetic energy of a particle varies jointly as its mass and the square of its velocity. Uh, so, true story, that is true. The kinetic energy of a particle does vary jointly as its mass and the square of its velocity. So, we could say E for energy. Um, e is equal to some constant times um, the mass of the particle and the square of its velocity. So velocity squared. Okay. Suppose we define the unit one gram chuck. My name's Graham. As the kinetic energy I have when my 70 kilogram self is hurtling through the air at 10 meters per second. So, like if someone chucked me through the air uh, for whatever reason, and I'm flying through the air at the fast rate of 10 meters per second, um, I have a certain amount of kinetic energy, I have a certain amount of energy of motion. And we're going to define that as one gram chuck. 
or GC. Um, so how many GCs of kinetic energy would a 680 kilogram polar bear have as it swims 2.5 meters per second? So let's figure out what this constant is first. So, uh, so one gram chunk of energy. So one. Uh, so the energy measured in GCs, one is equal to uh, the, some constant times my mass, 70 kilograms, times uh, my velocity, which is 10 meters per second squared. So 10 squared is 100. OK, so 1 is equal to k times 70 times 100. So 70 times 100 is 7,000. So k is therefore 1 7,000th. OK, so we could rewrite our equation as the energy, uh, but in, in gram chucks, okay, this equation is now only going to work if you're measuring kinetic energy in, in GCs. Energy, so let's, let's just write that, energy GC, uh, that looks like CC, energy G, so the energy in, in gram chucks is equal to this constant, which is we just determined based on experimental evidence. So one seven thousandth. Um, that constant times uh, mass times velocity squared. Okay, so now we can use that to figure out how many GCs of kinetic energy a 680 um, kilogram polar bear would have as it swims uh, 2.5 meters per second. So uh, the energy it would have and GCs would be uh, one seven thousandth times its mass, six hundred eighty kilograms, um, and its velocity is two point five meters per second. So we'll square that. So uh, let's just do that on the old trusty. Uh, so. We will 2.5, we'll square that, multiply it by uh, 680, and then we'll divide it by 7,000, aka multiply it by 1 over 7,000. So it would have about 0.607, that would be about 0.607. Uh, GCs. So, you know, decent amount of kinetic energy, not tons. Uh, less than I would have if I was hurling through the air at 10 meters per second. All right, so there's some um, practice on joint variation problems. And uh, so that's what it's talking about. If, you, if something varies jointly as something and then another something. All right. Okay, good luck.